Hello friends, welcome to G Century. So in this lecture, we will see what do we mean by current division rule, how this current gets divided when only two branches of the elements are given. So this current division rule is applicable only for the two resistors and they should be uh, they should be present at the different branches. Okay. So if there are more than two branches, then we cannot apply this current division rule. So coming to this first one, first uh, circuit diagram. So you have got a current source and you have got R1 and R2. So the current I is flowing from the current source. So when this I comes here, it gets split into two parts, which is having different values of resistors R1 and R2. So if you had to find the value of current I1, then what you have to do is you have to leave this branch where you want to find the current and take the value of the resistor of the other branch that is R2. So you should not take the resistor which is present where you have to calculate the current I1. Okay, So you have to leave this branch and take the value of the resistor of the other branch. So R2 then we have to take the sum of the resistors. Okay, Then multiply this whole equation with total current I. Okay, So this is for calculating I1. Now coming to I2 similarly do not take the value of the resistor which you have to calculate the value of the current. So leave this resistor and take the value of the opposite resistor that is R1 again summation of two resistors and this whole equation is multiplied by the total current I flowing in the circuit. So this is in the case of resistors. Coming to the inductor same thing for resistors, inductors and impedances the the equations will be same only the uh, resistors will be changed to inductor and inductor will be changed to impedance. So if you want to calculate the value of I1 you have to take the opposite inductor value that is L2 then L1 plus L2 multiplied with total current I of the circuit. Similarly if you want to calculate I2 then take this value of the inductor L1 then sum of the two inductors multiplied with the total current. Coming to this impedance, it is also having same thing. So Z1 is equal to, sorry, I1, this is I1. If you have to calculate the value of I1, take the impedance of the opposite branch, that is Z2 upon summation of Z1 plus Z2 multiplied with total current in the circuit. Next for calculating the value of current I2, take the opposite impedance Z1 of the other branch, then summation of Z1 plus Z2, then multiply it with total current. Coming to this capacitor problem, it is always, it runs opposite to all of these three. So what you have to do is, if you have to calculate the current of current I1 in this branch, then take the same capacitor. C1. Do not take the opposite one. Okay, so I1 and C1 rest remains the same. Summation of two capacitors and multiplied with the total current. So if you have to calculate value of I2, C2, then C1 plus C2 multiplied with total current I. So for calculating current I1 with respect to capacitor problem, you will take the value of capacitor from the same branch. Whereas for impedance, inductor and resistors, you will be taking the value of the second branch in which you do not have to calculate the value of the current. Okay. So it is nothing but I1 when subscript is 1, take here 2. Okay. Here when subscript is 2, take 1. Okay. So this is the current division rule. So based on this, we will see some of the problems. Now here we have only taken the current source. Okay, we haven't mentioned whether it is AC or DC. But uh, when DC is applied to the inductor, then it behaves like short circuit. And when DC is applied to capacitor, it behaves like open circuit. So what we will do, we will uh, see taking different uh, sources and how it behaves. And whether when it is short circuited, whether the value will be present or no. So we will take up few of the problems. Okay, coming to the problems. So first problem is to find I1, I2 and I3. Okay, sorry, I haven't mentioned the this one. Okay, here is I1, this is I2, and this is I3. 
So, we need to calculate the values of these three I1, I2 and I3. So, we will apply KV, uh, sorry, current division rule. You can also apply KCL but since we have learned KVL, uh, so, sorry, since we have learned current division rule, we will apply current division. Okay. So, now one source is given. Whenever there is one source in the circuit, we have uh, to find the total current in the circuit, we will uh, use the reduction technique. Okay. So, what is that reduction technique? Now, we will come from end to the start. So, now this 4 plus 2 ohm they are in series because same current is flowing through both the resistors. So, 4 plus 2 is 6, this becomes 6 ohm and 6 ohm is in parallel with 3 ohm. Okay. So, the circuit will be, so this is plus minus 24 volts, 2 ohm as it is. Okay. So, this will become, here it is. 3 ohms and 4 plus 2 is 6 ohms. Okay. So, now these two are in parallel, 6 is in parallel with 3. So, 6 into 3 is 18, 18 over 9 is 2 ohms. So, this will become, this is replaced with 2 ohms. Now, again these two are in series. So, total current in the circuit can be found out by I is equal to V upon R. So, the value of voltage source is 24 volts and total resistance equivalent resistance is 4 ohms. So, it is 6 ampere of current is flowing. So, I1 is nothing but equal to 6 amperes. Now, when this is 6 amperes, now these two together we will take it as 6 ohms because same current is flowing in the both the resistors. So, when same current is flowing, then we have to, uh, then we can apply current division rule. So, this whole thing we can replace it with one single resistor that is 6 ohm resistor. Okay. So, now we will, we want the current I2. So, we will write I2 and we will leave this branch and take the value of opposite the second branch that is 6 ohm upon 3 plus 6 total current is 6 amperes. Okay. So, 6 is 36 and 36 over 9 that is 4 ampere of current is flowing in the uh, th through 3 ohm resistor. So, the value of I2 is nothing but 4 ampere. Now, coming to the 6 ohm and we have to find the value of I3. So, leaving this resistor, we will take the value of this one. So, 9 into 6 which comes out to be 2 ampere. So, when you, you can also apply KCL here at node A, you will get the same answer. But, we will apply current division rule. Okay. Coming to the second question, they asked us to find I1, I2 and the value of V. Okay. So, now similarly here also similar to the other problem, first problem we have only got one source okay, and we do not know the value of that source. Uh, sorry, they have given the value of the source that is 120 amperes. So, this is the total current in the circuit, okay, but we have to it is applicable only to the two resistors. The current division is applicable only to the two resistors. So, what we will do again, we will reduction, we will use the reduction technique and come back so that we will be able to find the value of uh, current flowing in these two branches. Okay. We will find I2 also and we will find the value of V also. Okay. So, now this two are in series that is 40 plus 20 equal to 60 and 60 is in parallel with 240 ohms. Okay. So, when you solve this, this resistor comes out to be 48 ohms. Okay. So, this is 48 ohms. Then 48 ohms is in again parallel uh, sorry in series with 2 ohms. So, 48 plus 2 is 50 ohms. So, in this branch you will get 50 ohms. Okay, here you will get 50 and again this 50 is in parallel with 50. So, it will get, we will get 25 ohms. So, we will replace this one. Okay. Uh, so, here it is 120, 120 amperes of current is flowing. Okay. So, this is 125 and here we have got 25 ohms. Okay. So, now to find the value of current I1, we'll take this as i2 okay or i2 dash so we, we to find that current in these two branches we'll first we'll calculate i1 i1 is nothing but 25 upon 150 into total current that is 120 
amperes. So this zero, this zero gets cancelled. Three fours are three fives are five ones are five fours are. So twenty amperes of current is flowing in this branch. When twenty amperes is flowing, again you can apply KCL to find the value in the twenty five ohm resistor. So we will take it as I two dash. It is nothing but one twenty five upon one fifty into one twenty. So this twenty, this gets cancelled. Four five is a five two is a ten five five is a twenty five. Twenty five into four is hundred ampere. So in all hundred ampere of current is flowing through this. Branch. Now, I will redraw the circuit. Okay, so this is one twenty. Okay, and this is one twenty five. So this is one twenty ampere of current is flowing. That is I, I equal to one twenty ampere. And in this branch, that is one twenty five branch, how much current is flowing? It is. Twenty ampere, and in this branch it is hundred amperes. Okay, so now we know the we know this one, and here also again coming here, we have got fifty ohm here. Okay, fifty ohm branch uh, ohm resistor, and here also when we had found the equivalent, it had come out to be fifty ohms. Okay, so when you have taken here twenty, sixty, sixty in parallel with two forty, you had got forty eight ohms. Forty eight ohms in parallel with, sorry, in series with two ohms. So this will be fifty ohm. Okay, so this this amount of current that is hundred ampere again it gets split into these two. Since they were in series, they have fifty ohm, fifty ohm equal resistance value. What will the current do? The current is split exactly into two. Uh, exactly into two halves. That is hundred by two. Fifty ampere will flow in fifty ohm. Fifty ampere will flow in another fifty ohm. So this is fifty ampere of current is flowing here. So after that, when you are coming in this way, okay. So we know that I two is equal to fifty ohm, fifty ampere. Now to know the value of to find the value of V, what we have to do? We want the value of current. Let us take this current as something I four. Okay, so to calculate the value of I four, either you can apply current division rule, or you can calculate the current in this branch and again in this branch using KCL. Okay, so we will take the current division rule. What it is the current? Here it is sixty. So we want the branch in uh, current in this branch. So we will take the opposite resistor. So I four is equal to two forty upon So it is two forty upon forty plus sixty three hundred. Total current is fifty. So this zero, this zero gets cancelled. Three ones are three eights are. So that is forty ampere. So forty ampere of current is flowing through this branch I four. Okay, so the value of I four is forty ohms. So now we have to calculate the value of V using Ohm's law. We can calculate the value of V. It is nothing but V is equal to I into R. So the total current flowing in this branch is 40 amperes. So we will take 40 amperes into the value of resistors they have already given. That is 20 ohms. So in total it is 800 volts. This much. So whenever uh, the one source is given in the circuit. Then we will use the reduction technique to find the total current in the circuit. Okay, so while reducing the so resistor value, we will get the R equivalent, and if it is voltage source, we will divide it with R equivalent, and we will get the uh, answer for the total current in the circuit. If it is directly given as current source, then we can take directly the 120 amperes whenever it is directly given. Okay, so we will solve few more problems based on inductors. Okay, we will solve the questions based on some of the inductor questions. Okay, so now in this question, they have asked to find the energy stored in the inductor at steady state. So now, if you observe, this is a DC source. Okay, so what uh, what type of behavior does inductor show in the DC source? Whenever the DC source is applied, it behaves like a short circuit. Okay, so now uh, we will short this one. Okay, when I will redraw this. This is plus minus thirty six volts. 
and here it is a short circuit path. Okay, so here it is 6 ohm, this is also 6 ohm and here the current IL is flowing and this is 12 ohm resistor and here it is 3 ohm resistor. Now what whenever the short circuit it, it does not mean that there is no current flowing in this, uh, this path, okay there will be some amount of finite current flowing in the branch, okay. Now if you see there are 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 elements this can be a case of Wheatstone. So to check the condition of the, to check whether it is the case of the Wheatstone bridge what we will do we will take the multiplication of the diagonal which is present opposite to the arms. Now 3 into 6 is 18 and 6 into 12. So this is not equal to yeah, it is not equal value same value. So this is not the case of the Wheatstone bridge. So if it is not the case of the Wheatstone bridge then 0 ampere of current will not flow through this branch. So we will get the final finite value of the current IL and they have asked to calculate the energy. So in the first class we have seen types of elements that how what is the type of energy that inductor stores it is magnetic energy. So magnetic energy in the form of half L i square ok. So this is the energy stored in the inductor. So this we will write it as I L square because we have taken here I L. So again there is one source we will take the reduction so technique to get the value of current I. So this, the, this point A and this point also A that is because it has got the same potential and there is no element present in between the branch. Okay, so there is no resistor, no inductor or anything. So the has the same potential. So when they have the same potential, I can merge this one, club this one and redraw the circuit. So when I redraw the circuit, we will get something like this. So this is 36 volts and here it is nothing but okay, so Okay, so this is 12 ohm and this is 6 ohm and here we have 3 ohm and in this branch we have 6 ohm resistor. Okay, so this is how the, signal, uh, the circuit looks when these two points are clubbed point A. Okay, so now we will find the current I. So find that one we will see 12 into 6 they are in parallel 3 and 6 are in parallel ok. So, choose are 12 so 72 upon 18 so again we can divide it by 3 so 3 ones are 3 twos are 3 fours are 6 ones are 6 fours are so, so this is 4 ohm equivalent resistor so this I can replace with 4 ohm total is 4 ohm and 6 into 3 is 18 again this is 2 ohm ok here we will get 2 ohm. So 4 plus 2 again they are in series so total voltage is nothing but sorry total current is nothing but V by R so V value is 36 and current is resistor equivalent resistor is 4 plus 2 6 then we will get the total current as 6 amperes. Okay. So, this 6 amperes it can be using current division rule it can be divided in 12 ohm and 6 ohm. So, how much ever current is entering the circuit that much amount of current leaves the circuit. Okay. So, this current division rule it can be applied in a reverse way also to calculate the current here in this 3 ohm as well as 6 ohm. Okay. So, now to calculate the value of 12 what we can do 6 upon taking the value of other resistor where we do not want to calculate the value of current 6 upon 12 plus 6 into total current 6 ok. So, we will get 36 upon 18 which is equal to 2 ampere ok. So, 2 ampere of current flows in this 12 ohm branch. Similarly, here also we want the current in this 3 ohm branch ok. So, to get the value of that 3 ohm I 3 ohm we have got the 6 ohm then 3 plus 6 is 9 
into total current is 6. So, 36 upon 9 we will get 4 amperes. Now, whenever if you draw this circuit having the line like this and join it then it is not the correct one ok. So, because 6 ampere current leaves here and some students think that it is I L value ok. So, this method is wrong. So, now we have got the I value of I 3 ohms and we have got the 12, 12 ohm resistors that across this 12 ohm that is 2 amperes and this is 4 amperes. So, now using the KCL at this point A we can calculate the value of I L ok. So, this is leaving, this is entering and this is also leaving. So, I L plus 3 is equal to 2 sorry I L plus 4, I L plus 4 is equal to 2 and the value of current through the inductor is minus 2 amperes ok. So, this is the value of the current through the inductor, but what they have asked us to calculate? They have asked us to calculate the energy. So, we know the value of uh, formula for calculating the energy across the inductor that is half L i square. So, half into value of inductor is 2 Henry. So, 2 into minus 2 whole square. So, 4 joules of energy the inductor can be stored in the inductor that much of energy can be stored ok. So, now coming to this question fourth question we have got two inductors and they have asked to calculate the values of I 1 and I 2 in those two inductors ok. So, to calculate the values of I 1 and I 2 again it is a DC source. So, it is a DC source that means that the inductor is again short circuited. So, when the inductor is short circuited, so the diagrams looks like, so the circuit is this is 2 ohm and this is short circuit and this is one more short circuit path. So, this is 2 ohm and here is I 1 and I 2 ok. So, whenever this is a short circuit path it does not mean that it does not have any value of current flowing through this inductors ok. So, definitely they have got the values of I 1 and I 2 ok. Then uh, we can calculate the values of I 1 and I 2 when 3 uh, using the current division rule 3 Henry and for 6 Henry ok. For, for that, but we have to know the total current I flowing in the circuit. It is simple we will take uh, I is equal to V upon R. So, we know the total voltage 18 and equivalent is 2 and this is 9 ampere ok. So, when this is 9 ampere, but there will be definitely there will be current division because there is 3 Henry and 6 Henry inductor. If it is short circuit the whole of the current will not flow through this path that we will understand with help of one diagram ok. Before that we will solve this using the current division rule. Now, calculating the value of I 1 take the opposite inductor that is 6, it is it is same as resistance. So, 6 plus 3 is 9 into 9. So, here it is 6 ampere and for calculating current I 2 we will take 3 upon 9 into 9. So, this is 3 amperes. So, the value of I 1 is equal to 6 amperes and value of I 2 is equal to 3 amperes. Now, that because there will be some energy stored in the inductors ok. So, to understand that we will take the example of a tap ok. Here is a tap and ok. Here is a tap and inlet for the water and after this inlet of the water then it has to go in the outlet of the water ok. There is a way for that also. So, it will go in this direction. Okay. So, this is incoming think that when the water is flowing through the tap it is the flow of energy ok. We will say flow of some charge and this inductor has to store that charge. So, whenever this inlet is stopped or opposed we will put a bucket here ok. So, this bucket when it is empty bucket is placed here it will oppose that flow. So, it is opposing that charge this whatever it was going here now it will be collected in this tank in this bucket. So, when this is full when this empty bucket gets full again whatever the initial condition was there it will flow 
that will this bucket will be filled it will be completely full so it cannot take more than that so what it will go it will be overflowing and it will go to the initial however it was flowing it will go in the initial way okay similarly that only happens so whenever the inductor its capacity is complete okay then it will it will not take that current and hence it becomes steady state so this short circuit does not mean that it does not have any inductor stored uh, energy of the inductor stored there will be definitely some of the energy and some of the current flowing in the branch okay so this completes the current division rule in the next class we will see what do we um, mean what is the formula for voltage division rule okay thank you